There's a lot of things that happens there that people don't know. Like I go, I, I go to Kayamandi, my one cousin still stays in the shack. Like you go there, there's like 10 toilets. And about more than 3,000, 3, 4,000 people, everyone uses those toilets. So that means at night, you use, need to use a bucket and then in the morning go drop it. And sometimes it's like, it's not nice. It's not a nice living. Like when I, now when I go to my place after those days, I feel guilty because I'm like, I've tried to go and study um, without an interpreter or a note taker and unfortunately I was unable to pass. Um, and I remember once we were working in Kailicha with a bunch of students and we were explaining to them how they were human and therefore they had access to all these rights and we listed all 30 human rights and everyone was really excited and these students were like wow. Um, are these really, you know, there for us and can we really have these rights? And we said yes and we then asked the students to draw themselves um, surrounded by all these human rights. Um, and I remember just being really shocked when I came across the one drawing of a young girl and uh, she wasn't drawing a human, she was drawing herself as an animal. And I asked her why and she said because she doesn't have any of those things that we mentioned she doesn't believe that she ever will. And because of that, in her mind, she thought that what we were saying was that she is not human, that she's actually something other than a human. She's an animal. And to have a six-year-old girl tell me that because she doesn't have access to rights, she is nothing more than an animal, was incredibly hard. I don't know, we've made to believe. So there's a thing where if, you, if, you, if someone looks at you in a certain way, you start believing it and look at it, you look at yourself in that way. Till you live in those conditions, you understand that no one wakes up in the morning and say, I'm gonna rob people because they've made a career out of it. Recently we went to a place called Robertson, one of the farm areas out of Cape Town, and realized that there are a lot of human rights violations and people are still being treated as slaves. We might be living in a period where slavery is over, but then you realize that yeah, there's a lot of work which needs to be done and people are living under conditions that are pathetic. Far too many children emerge from the primary and secondary education system actually unable to read or write. Social security, um, housing, um, water and sanitation, um, education, um, the right to a family. These are major human rights which are violated in South Africa on a daily basis. When you know it, you know it. I know it's wrong. So it, it's me. But to them it's normal. I always say the only way to understand that life is not to visit, it is to live it. Because until then you're just a tourist in your own country. You, you are a tourist in your own city. It's only 50% of the children who start at grade one who actually make it up all the way to matric. There are times where the teacher doesn't show up. And it was okay for us. We played the whole period that we we're supposed to be learning. And there are times where you, the teacher is just there, but you don't understand anything. Human rights are a set of 30 fundamental rights that every person is entitled to purely based on the fact that they are human. They are rights that are specifically collated and cover particular needs that people um, should have in order to live well-rounded, healthy, safe lives. Human rights are a set of values to which everybody is entitled by virtue of being a human being. And these values are interrelated and interdependent and indivisible. They range from socio-economic rights to civil and political rights to environmental rights. You get workers' rights, you get um, gender rights. It's the one set of rights that really truly cover every single person on this planet. Any conduct of government that is inconsistent with the Constitution is invalid. So it, it actually is a big weakness of our Constitution that our members of Parliament would rather toe the party line because if they don't, they lose their seat. So if human rights are threatened or infringed, then it is open to any citizen who feels threatened or feels violated to approach the courts for declaratory, mandatory or 
uh, supervisory relief. From the word human itself, we all need to treat each other with respect and dignity. I would like to see ordinary South Africans all becoming champions of human rights. It is really of no use to have a state-of-the-art Bill of Rights and not use it. I'm human first before I have a nationality. Yes, my nationality is very important, my race is important. However, before all those things, I am human. Like human rights are really the blueprint for peace. My mom was with me and the house mother arrived and then another interpreter arrived. And the interpreter was providing the service. And then my mother the next moment says, oh, but she's saying this and this. And I said, no, no, don't worry, I have an interpreter. And my mother didn't know what to do. Um, and when I looked again, she was crying. And I said, hey, you know, it's okay. And the house mother said, oh, shame. I understand your daughter will be so far from home, but she'll be fine. And my mother said, no, no, I'm not crying about that. I'm crying because my daughter has access. Look at the interpreter. She has now someone who can provide that access for her. But they do want to have those things. So it's not like I believe if that they, they have less value or I, I had less value when I was there. It's just that I grew up in those conditions where you, you, you like, it's funny, like some of the, like when we were young, you asked like, what do you want to be when you're old? So, that means you want to be a white person because it was in the color that you wanted to be. It was actually what they had that you wanted. So you wanted the same lifestyle, you wanted the same opportunities in a way. So you then wanted to say, you said you want to be a Mlungu. But it's not actually that, it's not like I want to change my skin tone and be white. No, it's actually you want what they have. It is a definite link between rights and responsibility. The right to swing your arm ends where your neighbor's nose begins with freedom of speech. You are allowed, in essence, to express any ideas that you have. But once those ideas start, start bordering on hate speech, and if you start advocating for war, if you start advocating for hatred and violence, then the courts have every, have, have every um, right to curtail your freedom of speech. I would like to see ordinary South Africans all becoming champions of human rights. In terms of how best can we make this issue of human rights practical and making sure that everyone's needs are met. As South Africans, I think that we should fight to leave no one behind. I think it's important for citizens to first of all be aware of their rights. I would say one thing that can change a lot is if we make people aware of their rights and, and then the more we do that, then the more people actually uh, start being more involved. Like, I mean, and I didn't know that I, I had a right to go to the parliament if there was an event. But now I know, and then now I go, and I actually now, like now even when there's, uh, there's elections coming, so now I'll make an informed decision of which party I vote for. Firstly, because uh, if we learn to embrace human rights, like I said, it will regulate our behaviors, regulate our attitudes, start seeing things differently. I think that's the most important thing, like, um, I understand with the history of South Africa, we are coming to, from a history where differences were so pronounced, but I think uh, if we understand human rights, it's a perfect vehicle or a tool for us to start embracing social cohesion. We would not let people treat us the way we, they do, and we would not let people treat our brothers and sisters the way that we do, in township areas, um, on the streets. Um, we have people who are being exploited daily. And if we truly did believe in fundamental human rights, that would not be okay to us. So the world will try to dim human rights for us. They'll try to distract us with other things. Um, and I think that's a major problem because if we forget about human rights, we forget about people and we forget about their value. And we start classifying them as the other as someone that is less valuable than us and therefore doesn't deserve the same things that we have. Grasp the concept of human rights, they will start uh, to look for these realities in their daily lives. So for me, I think young people should champion the whole idea of promoting human rights in South Africa. But I do believe in the potential of every single person because we've done it before. In South Africa, we brought an oppressive system, one of the most oppressive systems, Apartheid. We brought that to an end. Everyday citizens did that. And if we can do that, we can do anything.
We are the future leaders. We are the ones who will be uh, monitoring the SDGs and everything. So I believe if we as young people take a stand to say we want to promote respect and dignity in South Africa, then a lot can be achieved.